Does performance mean different things to different people? Oh, definitely. Um, when depending on the the crowd that I'm that I'm talking to, you really I really realize that I'm talking about completely different metrics for different people. So, for example, business owners, performance to them uh, means you know how does page load and site speed correlate to metrics like well, uh, bottom line, really revenue, productivity, things like that that they care about. Um, but if you talk to somebody in operations, you know performance means well, you know how quickly do my servers respond? You know what's what what how fast is it? DNS lookup, so that's the number they care about. And then, if you're talking to somebody in in marketing, what they care about is you know how quickly do, does a page start to render, how fast does you know the user see what they need to see. And then you've got people in DevOps who you know, what they care about is just load time. They want to make sure that all the assets on the page are loading quickly. So, and that's just a handful. You know, really, there there are about 20 or 30 different metrics that that I write and talk about on a regular basis. So you really have to find the right one that speaks to the right people. Is it important for a business? to have a broad concept of what performance is, what everybody sh it shares in the definition, or is it okay that there's a lot of variations within it? It would be great if there were just one mm -hmm. single metric. We kind of make the joke at Sosta that we talk about the unicorn metric. Yeah. It just doesn't <laughs> exist that you know everybody could rally around one thing. Sure. Um, it's I think what's important at a high level is that everybody even just like grocks the idea that you know, uh, performance matters. You know that performance correlates to any metric they care about. So first, you know even 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 crossing that bridge is or can be a really huge step. Um, in terms of finding that unifying metric, actually at SOSA we just uh, announced something called the Consumer, Perform uh, Consumer Performance Index, where uh, you can actually look it up, consumerperformanceindex.com, where um, anybody can enter their URL into, um, into our, our engine, and we'll tell you what your, your CPI score, hmm. what we're calling it, is. And what that does is it takes um, your your load time, and so uh, we take your synthetic load time if you are not an impulse user. Impulse is our real user monitoring solution, and we take your real user measurement run, uh, load time if you are an impulse user, and we correlate that with tons and tons of uh, data that we already have, real user data, like you know about, about eight billion beacons worth of, of real user data um, around uh, real user monitoring and bounce rate. And we can actually give assign a site a score based on um, how you know, the CPI score tells you how likely people are to stay on your page mm -hmm. for that given page. And so it's a it's a it's a weighted algorithm that's this very very complex. Like the, the summary overview document's about six pages long, um, but it actually it's quite robust and quite nuanced, and it uh, and it, it ranks you uh, from one to a hundred with eighty eight. I think being the highest score we've seen so mm. far from Google, of mm -hmm. course. Yeah. Um, and and that's that's our effort, and uh, you know the effort of a, of a group of data scientists and product managers and people like that to to try to come up with as much as possible, at least a metric that people can start to rally around before you know, heading off in their, their various directions. So we know that the unicorn metric will presumably remain a unicorn, yes. right? Mm -hmm. But do you feel that the solution for getting people to at least be able to speak the same language, if not within a corporation, but across businesses, is some type of roll up like what you're talking about, mm -hmm. where it's an algorithmic thing where you can uniformly plug in and evaluate against that? I mean, do you feel that that's the way that that performance metrics are going? It's, I think it's where it has to start. What we've learned over the years, and I've definitely seen this firsthand, is that um, you know, I, I, I write a lot of case studies and I read a lot of case studies around performance, <coughs> and they can be from a wide variety of companies like Google and Amazon and Yahoo, you know, all the way down to, to SMBs. And um, the reaction that I get is people say, well, that's really interesting, but that's them, that's not me. My site's different, my users are different. And people, I think, out of, uh, there's a little bit of, you know, kind of fear wanting to to say like well you know that probably doesn't apply to me and just and rationalizing why performance doesn't matter as much for their particular site so I think the the first thing people need to do is to have some metric that actually is based on their own data um, and and uh, you know we're hoping with CPI um, the, the the plan is that that's that first metric that kind of gets the toe in the door and then people can branch out from there how have metrics changed over the last few years They've definitely become a lot more nuanced um, in the six years that I've been in this space. You know, the, uh, in the early days, everybody's wrote about load time. Mm -hmm. You know, and and so, I mean, start render and things like that. But you know, these these metrics that we've been able to gather for for quite a bit of time through tools like Web Page Test. 
Um, and now the conversation is moving toward you know getting more nuanced findings. So um, at SOSTA we just released an ebook. Uh, you can download it. It's, it's called Everything You Need to Know About Navigation Timing, Resource Timing, and User Timing. <laughs> <laughs> and it's uh, SOSTA.io slash perf timing. Um, and you can uh, you can learn a lot about how user timings work, which are basically marks that you put on the on the page. Developers have the the ability to do this, that will actually um, uh, let you know how the page renders with regard to. So, as it just as, an, as a, for instance, um, you can tag your your hero image if you uh, oh, okay. if you care about perceived performance. Sure. What are the primary assets that, from a user's perspective, you want to ensure that they're seeing, and you 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 mark those with the user timing. And then you can actually gather that data now, and so that's uh, that's being supported more and more. And I think we're going to hear more about user timing in in the very near future. That kind of leads me into my next question: Do you anticipate that the nuance will get even more nuanced as we evolve over the next couple of years with metrics? Yes, definitely. Um, what I'm seeing a lot of conversation around user timing. It's really turning into well, what do we mark? So I think it's really exciting that we can even have that kind of conversation yeah. where we, uh, you know, now we're, we're getting getting into the user experience realm of well, what matters? And I think we're going to see more research um, coming from different companies. And ideally, I would love to see user experience and usability companies, uh, researchers kind of cu coming in on this to actually say, well, you know, from a user experience perspective, what actually matters? I mean, at SOSTA, we uh, now that we're, we're, we're pushing more of our users to um, adopt user timings uh, in their, with their RUM metrics, um, we're, we hope to see more people doing that, and then we can correlate that to uh, conversions, revenue, cart size, balance rate, all, the, all those metrics are already already tracking. But right now, because user timing has had such a low adoption rate historically, because it's, because it's so new, um, we, we're not doing that so much. So we're still correlating all those business metrics to load time and start render. It's a really interesting idea to be able to mark particular components of pages, too. I mean, mm -hmm. that just seems like the natural shift that we would need for this type of stuff. Exactly, and and it lets you really customize what you're gathering to your particular site and your yeah. particular users. And so I think what's exciting and probably intimidating as well for site owners is realizing you have this unprecedented level of uh, of access to understanding your you know your, your real users' experience and gathering all that data. And it, it, you know the intimidating part is just knowing where to begin mm -hmm. and how to even get started. Do you think that's going to be the main shift away from just the the uh, uh, acquisition of data versus how actual people are using the actual site? Yeah, I think so. And what's interesting to me too is that um, I'm seeing this broad spectrum of people where they're at in terms of, of, of understanding that they need to measure uh, performance. And so I think at the kind of bleeding edge, we have a small number of companies that have always been kind of pushing the envelope in terms of, of measuring performance, really getting out there and, and, and being the guinea pigs for this. And then at the far further, furthest end of the spectrum in the other direction, um, companies that are still using, like, what's web page test? Mm -hmm. what, is, what, what is load time mean? Mm -hmm. What does start render mean? You know, it's so um, I see the, 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 the gap is really, really broad, but I do see it as a like there's a continuum. And so we just need to get those people on board and kind of move them over in this sure. direction. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we made the transition away from just having a web page to, oh, there are actually are metrics on a web page and I can evaluate those. Exactly. So maybe the logical extension of that is performance is, is a key indicator of that as well. So last question for you, what people or projects are you following these days? Oh, that's a very good question. Um, I well, the the big project that has been occupying a lot of my mind space has been uh, launching the consumer performance index. So that's um, a relief to see that launched, and it's like out in the out mm -hmm. in the wild now. And we'll be revisiting that. And uh, the great thing about it is that it's built on the backbone of the HTTP archive, so we can gather. You know, we can we can do a lot of cool things with it in terms of, um, of going in kind of into the well. You know, every quarter and and you know generating cool reports about you know up to a million different websites and and, and doing that sort of thing. So that's that's it's going to be an ongoing thing for me. And then in terms of people I'm following, I mean, I think, you know, all the people that I, that I think other people should be following, um, you know, Laura Hogan at Etsy is just writing really cool stuff about creating performance culture and, um, and designing for performance. So kind of really, I think she does a really great job of bridging that gap between engineering and user experience and also business culture as well. So I'm I, 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 a big hero of hers. 
or she, oh, sorry, she, <laughs> she's a big hero of mine. Um, and uh, Ilya Gregoric, mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, out there, you know, just, uh, you know, I, really kind of, you know, pushing that bleeding edge of, of just, you know, I think anything Ilya's talking about now is what everybody's going to be talking about a year from now. So he's just somebody to watch to know, you know, what I think what the, what the emerging trends are going to be. And then, you know, always, I'm always interested in HDB archive and how that's evolving as well. So, and, and web page test and now uh, speed curve, you know, is, is a great tool that's built on the backbone of web page test. So there's lots of great tools out there that are just keep getting better. So I just kind of keep going back to those. Great, well thanks for being with us. Thank you.